This pocket of Toronto was a source of inspiration for almost 10 years, where my daily commute to the software startup life was fueled almost exclusively by golf dreams. When I got home from a day's work, my 300 square foot condo was designed with golf in mind. Here's a picture of Sean in what was my bedroom, my kitchen, my living room, leading up to the USAM four ball in the spring of 2015. The paintbrush is about 30 minutes north of this pocket of downtown Toronto, and getting the opportunity to team up with them as a part of their major rebrand was one of the most exciting opportunities for us this summer. The paintbrush is Herdson and Fry's best design, according to Dr. Michael Herdson himself. And considering they had their hands in Shelter Harbor, Aaron Hills, Calusa Pines, it's a pretty bold statement. The paintbrush draws upon inspiration from some of the world's best. Two, for example, feels like a bit of a blend between Alistair McKenzie's Dell and Klondike holes at La Hinch. Why not mix in a bit of Dornock influence on the par 3 4th? The winding and downhill fairway at the 11th makes you feel like you're at Arcadia Bluffs. The uphill approach shot on 12 is reminiscent of Charlie's 17th approach shot. The width of the 17th tee shot sort of makes you feel like you're playing the first hole at the old course, while admittedly the approach is nothing like the home of golf. Simply put, the paintbrush is a golf playground. It's like bringing out the Tonka trucks again in the sandbox and just experiencing pure joy. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some of the hole-by-hole -hole detail that helps convey why this place is just so great. The brilliant thing about one is that it's a gentle opener, but it makes you think about how much to chew off on your first swing of the day. The more you take on, the more narrow the fairway gets, the more risk you bring into the equation, etc., etc. Two presents your first real birdie opportunity of the day. The thing that gets in every golfer's head on two is just the giant mound in front of the green that rejects every low ball flight um, or anything that's not coming in from the right to left. Three is an awesome drivable par four where you really do have to thread the needle to get close, preferably from the left to the right. Depending where the pin is, you might leave yourself with some really awkward chip or flop shots from tight lines. Four is an awesome part three, and on the day of the shoot we were so grateful to see the pin in the back left where you cannot go short, long, or left. On six, the player should have no difficulty navigating the fairway bunker, so really this hole is all about the approach shot and distance control. The green does have two very distinct features and plateaus with a collection area to the right of the green that you want to avoid. The eighth is likely a three-shotter for most golfers, and the decision off the tee is, does the player go left or right of the ruins in the middle of the fairway? The second shot is purely a function of where the pin is that day. If it's in the back left, it's okay to be on the right side of the fairway because you are a little bit more elevated, and if the pin's on the right-hand side, uh, the further left you go on your second, the better angle you'll have in. After making the turn, leave the driver in the bag off the 10th tee. There's really no point in busting it out. Lay up shy the pop bunkers, you'll have a flip wedge up into the screen. The 
you gotta love the scale and the width of the 11th hole of the paintbrush. While it's probably a three-shotter, longer players can take an aggressive line off the right and try to catch some downslope. Maybe gun for the green in two, just be aware of the nostril bunkers in front and the tree in the middle of this double green. At 394 yards, there's no point in bringing out your inner Bryson on the 12th hole. It really is about distance control in the approach shot here. 13's a scary golf hole. At 230 yards, the stone wall on the right hand side really does creep in up by the green there. And you just can't go too far left either off the tee. has got to be one of the prettiest pieces of the property at the paintbrush. It's probably the second most reachable par 5 aside from the second hole, but it's absolutely littered with bunkers inside of 250 yards. Fifteen's the only golf hole out here that has a water feature that comes into play. No need for driver, just get the ball in the fairway, hit in the middle of the green on your second shot, take your two-putt par, and run to the 16th. Eighteen is a fantastic finishing hole. Left to right off the tee, you've got to avoid your bunkers and place the ball in the fairway. And then you've got to navigate the kidney green that you're approaching into with the scar bunker. It's about six feet deep, so certainly you want to avoid that on the last hole of the day. The paintbrush incorporates the three schools of design. It's got some heroic elements, some penal elements, but we love how much strategy comes into the equation. It certainly gives you options, but most importantly to us at least, it promotes creativity for all four hours while you're out there.